Hello, Ramin. How are you doing? I'm good. Hi, Roberto. My name is Ramin Samandari. I, I'm, a, I'm a photographer here in, uh, I live in San Antonio. Um, I'm, I'm from Iran. I was born in Iran. Uh, I've been in the state for uh, 40, 42 years now, almost 42 years. And um, I, I do have uh, relatives all over the, all over the world. And so everyone is going through the <clears throat> the, the lockdown and the contagion, uh, COVID nineteen. So it's been it's been very strange. I think it's uh, um, nothing like anyone has in their lifetime has experienced. I think you know everyone compares it to the nineteen eighteen flu, which uh, no one is alive uh, to give a first hand uh, from that experience. So this is all new for everyone. I think. Um, as an as an artist, I I I I've been kind of tough, you know, business wise, work wise. Um, so um, I just uh, <clears throat> um, for a long time I was worried about my cousins in Iran. Iran has been hit very hard. I know Italy um, uh, for a while was was the first number one place with the most cases. Iran was number two, um, right. four, and uh, I think they. Uh, I mean, without a doubt, they they made a lot of mistakes. The the government in Iran, uh, uh, they didn't close any borders. They didn't stop traveling. All the religious shrines, people kept going to them, um, and traveling within the country and outside the country. So, and. Uh, <clears throat> Of course, the numbers that they they say how many people have it in Iran is something like seventy something thousand, with about uh, almost five thousand people died. But everyone knows that that number is not not true. It's, it's much more. Just uh, statistically, I have uh, uh, one of my cousins was a physician in, in Iran, and he was telling me <clears throat> just how many people he sees in his little practice. Uh, he finally had to close the practice, the little office, uh, because he, they didn't have protection. Uh, he, he was telling me that they use the same mask over and over, same pair of gloves. They don't have any uh, lack of protection. Uh, so it's been, yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say. What would you like me to talk about? Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for, for giving us a kind of a, an, an idea, an introduction also of uh, know how you as a person are dealing with this and with having people so far away and not knowing what's happening really, not having the right um, uh, kind of information, how frustrating and how scary that is. Yeah. So... And uh, now coming back to the United States, you're in San Antonio as we, I am, and we are in the group. Um, so as an artist, what was the first impact? It can be any type, kind of impact, but uh, I, I would like to, to really, for you to give us a sense of where you are as a photographer, in terms of also your business and also uh, so the concrete aspect of your of your profession, and also the artistic one. What what does it mean? Uh, so, but we'll take it one step at a time. So, in terms of uh, so the impact of this to you as a as a business, also. Um, uh, well, the, the first impact to me it came uh, in my in my teaching job. I, I teach uh, photography at, at Southwood School of Art, and um, in the second week of March. Uh, when um, uh, other, uh, I think primary schools had closed and everything, um, and universities were going online teaching, um, Southwest School of Art, um, they decided to close and cancel the rest of the term. So I had uh, five more weeks to go. So after the second week of the classes, they got canceled. And which was understandable. It was it's the necessary thing to do. Uh, the thing that hurt me um, financially was that because I'm a part-time adjunct, uh, I only got paid for the two weeks. So I didn't get, 
uh, I didn't get the full pay. Um, and that was kind of bothered me uh, because the, 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 the tuition didn't get returned to the school. Right? But anyway, um, and then um, I had a project in, 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 um, in conversation with the uh, Institute of Text and Culture. I did a project for them that uh, they, they came public last year on immigration that they supported, they funded. And we were talking about the new project I'm working on that they were, I was gonna do it this year. So we were at the last stages of, of getting the funding and everything went up in the air. So it's, for now, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's in the air now. And so these are two big things. Uh, as far as uh, what I had going that got stopped. And then, of course, in my studio, um, uh, no one comes, obviously. So mm -hmm. I can't do any work here. Um, but I have been focusing on my own work. I mean, I had two or three projects happen working on. And so it gave me time to keep working on those, keep my mind off of the fact that uh, how do I pay the rent or whatever. So. Uh, keep doing that, and so so the impact has been, you know, immediate and very real. And then you know, as you know, uh, the art is always the first thing that gets cut, funding for it, no matter if anything that happens. So it's easy to go to, and uh, I know a lot of institutions in town got their funding cut. Um, uh, Luminaria, I was going to do Luminaria for this year, and they just announced that they're going to just cancel it after postponing after so it's it's been it's been really tough on the art community as a whole i know a lot of artists who are um, uh, we're trying to do anything we can remotely i i i did uh, a few printing jobs for some people and shipped it to them i've been going to the post office more often than i ever did before just to ship stuff to people so it's been a little bit of help, um, um, but overall, it's it's um, it's kind of tough, and um, I don't really mind the isolation so much. I'm I'm kind of a um, introvert in a way, so uh, being by myself uh, doesn't affect me as much. Um, but the reason that I know we have to be by ourselves that's that's always in the back of my mind I and mean, um, it is scary it's scary to uh, to do anything to go out and uh, I was just at the post office today and uh, everyone has to wear a mask now so I put it on and when I go in there everybody's got a mask on except this one lady <laughs> she, she's over there no mask and I debated whether I should mention to her you know where is your mask uh, but I, I didn't, but I, I think maybe I should have. Um, um, some people just don't seem to really care or, or really get the, the danger of, of what this virus can do. All right. So uh, you, you talked about the project that you had with the text, uh, the, 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 the project on immigration, right? With the um, text and last year. Right, that uh, had to be canceled. No, that one didn't get canceled. That one finished last year. Oh, that. Yeah, the, the new project that was, I've been working on since last year that they were going to fund for this year uh, was on the Muslim community. Oh, I, I, yeah, I was doing something called Faces of Islam, kind of like I did the Faces of Art. And, and so uh, uh, for about a year and a half, I've been photographing uh, people in the Muslim community going to a lot of mosques and people come to the studio also. And then I do an interview, a oral audio interview. And uh, we talk about lots of different issues about being a Muslim and just some political stuff or something like that. And uh, so this project, they want uh, the Institute of and Culture wants to have it for the permanent collection. So that's the one that's um, postponed right now. Don't know when it's going to come back. So tell me more about this project. I find it fascinating and uh, knowing also your work, it's going to be fantastic. Um, uh, because we should also look at things that, although they have been postponed, they are still there, right? You have already done, I'm sure, a lot of work on that. 
So if you wouldn't mind giving us a little snippet of what you have discovered uh, and uh, why, you are, why you are focusing on the Muslim community, what is the objective of you as an artist in focusing on this community? Um, sure, sure. Um, um, both of the projects, the immigration and the, and the Muslim project, uh, I, I thought about doing it in 2016, um, right after the election of, of yeah. Trump. Uh, there was a lot of anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim, anti-lots of things. And uh, um, I was born in a Muslim country, although I don't think of myself as a Muslim. I'm, I'm closer to being an atheist than any religion, really. Um, but I wanted to do these projects uh, to, um, so I did the immigration, uh, took me a couple of years to do. And the Muslim project came right after it. And I wanted to sort of uh, give the, a view, a cross section of the Muslim people who live in San Antonio. They're from all over the world. Some have just recently moved here. Some have been here for many, many years. <clears throat> um, all, all kinds of people. And uh, they're just like regular people. They, they you know, they, they're doctors, lawyers, this, that. And their their neighbors, your schoolmates, um, they just happen to have this other religion that they practice. And so I wanted to make it normal, make it make it look like um, they're not some um, strange uh, thing that to be afraid of. And at the same time, I wasn't trying to um, propaganda for Muslim because several people in the in the dialogue that I recorded. Uh, they didn't really have that much good to say about Islam. Uh, they come from Muslim countries whose governments are very oppressive, like Iran, for instance. So, um, so there's all there's all of that in there too. So basically, it's it's a it's a portrait, and whether I do it on location or here at the studio, uh, and then an audio interview. I ask them questions. Um, um, where they're from, and 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 then there's people who have converted to Islam. So there's American people, and so the question is, you know, like that: What does it mean to be a Muslim? What is your experience in in the West as as a Muslim, and, and specifically in San Antonio? Um, and and that's the kind of dialogue, and they they can expand as much as they want. So I want, the project was going to be they wanted the audio file. Uh, for their archive, <clears throat> and <clears throat> and I would uh, not unlike the immigration series that all the pictures were together as one. These were going to be individually printed and framed, and each one would have a statement underneath from the stuff that they said. So it would be that person's. So it's a very you know, individual, intimate look at each individual. Uh, I didn't want to show it as a monolith of here's all the Muslims, they all look alike or something. I wanted to be individual. And uh, I had finished all the photography. I had had enough uh, participants. And so it was in the last stages of just talking to them about um, getting the funding and getting it going. Um, so that's where it, it kind of stopped right now. But as you say, it, it, I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm, I'm in the process of uh, listening to all the audios and transcribing them. So I have all the uh, written material ready. So when we hopefully pick it back up, so I can do it. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so that um, one type of tutors that I do is called tutor for social change or tutor of the oppressed. And we do a similar work. We uh, uh, focus on communities and we interview them. And out of the interviews, we figure out what is the kind of, if there is an oppression in their way of life. And out of that, we create a play. So maybe we should talk in the future and uh, we could combine your work with the work of a performance mm -hmm. so that uh, we can then bring these people that you have photographed and uh, we can do a performance with them where they can get to do some work. We'll talk about this, you know? Uh, that's, uh, I find uh, this work fantastic and fascinating. 
And you see, we create connections even when we are in uh, lockdown and as artists always looking for opportunities, right? It's fantastic. So, Ramin, as a photographer, why doing this work? I know you have done the work on immigrants, I know, because I was part of that, and also a work on, uh, on uh, Muslims, as, I, as you said, and of course the work that you did before. Why? And so that we have a sense of you as an artist, and then, but then we can focus on, well, now what do we do, right? Sure, sure. Um, I, I, I kind of think of it as, as uh, in photography, I've, as long as I've been doing photography, it goes back maybe 30 years or so. Um, I've always been interested in the human. And for a long time, it, it, it exhibited, it, 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 it manifested itself in my work in the human figure and, and in nature. So the connection between humans and nature. And so I, I did a lot of series of, of, of uh, uh, figures within nature um and 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 faces always have fascinated me and and these kinds of the, the series that i started doing with the artist series in 2013 so from 2013 until now i've been mostly focused on photographing faces uh whether it was the artist faces and the integration and the muslim uh these are uh, kind of uh, these are documentary photography um and I see, I almost see it as a duty. Uh, photography is a medium that perfectly lends itself to capturing uh, the moment that we live in. I, I can't make up something uh, out of my imagination and make a photograph. I have to see something in real life, <coughs> uh, an object or a tree or a person and, and, and capture the image. So you know, documenting something that has a social conscious to it, um, I'm at I'm 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 at that stage of my career, so to speak. Um, I'm, I'm I'm 60 now, and I feel like uh, this is what's interesting to me more than anything else. I still like to do nature. I still like to do other things, but this these projects <clears throat> that take a long time and examine an issue uh, with people uh, in it. Uh, I see them as participants. They're not models. They're part of it. They're my partners. Um, I, I think they're important um, to do in times that we are. And, and photography is the medium really for that. I mean, there's film, there's theater that, that grabs the moment. Uh, and photography is is like that. Um, it captures that instant that doesn't come back again. Um, so that, that's why I do it. That's why I, I feel drawn to it. I, I have to do it. So as you said, a, a duty of capturing the moment, so, so kind of documenting what is happening in the moment. So what kind of moments would you need or would you want to capture now in this moment <laughs> just not to use the pan there the moment the moment but yeah. we do. well, it, well it, it's it's different now because uh it's hard to capture people because you're supposed to stay away from people and so lately last about last month i've been going walking around downtown and all over downtown from my studio at Blue Star, just grab my camera and walk all over. And I'm capturing the, the, the no people, the nothingness, sort of the, the absence of, 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 of what I like to photograph. Uh, and it's been fascinating. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a look that I've never seen. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, I posted some on Facebook just, just, to, just to post it. And people have got so interested, they're ordering prints. They want, they want this one and that one printed. So that's <laughs> fantastic. Actually, I had no idea. I, was, I had no intention of printing any of these. I just wanted to show uh, what San Antonio is looking like, uh, where it's always full of people, full of life. 
uh, on on weekdays. There's cars, people going to work, weekends, tons of people, tourists, but it's nothing, all empty. And so I'm I'm doing that now. I'm I'm sort of focused on that um, because you know, as you know, right now um, I I wanted to go uh, do some. Anything I think about to do documentary that involves a lot of people, um, it, it kind of makes me a little nervous, both for myself and for other people, uh, that I don't want to expose anyone to anything. So, so it, it's a challenge to find uh, anything that's interesting to do. And uh, you, you can't photograph nature because everything, all the parks and everything is closed. So empty streets, uh, they have no virus to give you. It's empty streets. So I'm walking in the middle of the street, in the middle of the intersection, and no cars coming, and I'm photographing all surrounding. It's been fun. It's been kind of fun. <laughs> in a way, you, you're answering one, one question. What does an artist do when its subject disappears? Mm -hmm. And you, you are answering, I'm photographing the absence of that subject. And through that, you're discovering. So, in addition of um, you know making this an opportunity to make some living, some uh, some money, which is always fantastic, is there anything else that you are discovering by in doing this? I mean, in the, in looking at the absence of your subject, what who is who is it, or who or what is becoming your subject in this moment? Then, um, well, the, the subject is becoming the 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 inanimate subject, it, it, whether it's a building or whether it's a, it's a monument that would have a lot of people around it and now it just sits there all by itself. Um, uh, the streets, the everything, all the buildings, the river walk, sections that, you know, empty chairs, uh, empty uh, market square with the statues there, but no people to look at them. Um, uh, photography, is, is, is the challenge of photography, like you say, if you're going to photograph people and then there's no people, uh, what do you, what can I do? So that exactly like that, you photograph the absence of people. And uh, so that's, it, 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 it's a little bit, um, uh, when I go out, I'm emotionally, it affects me a little bit um, to, to see all this emptiness. Um, and to really, it, I, I start to feel it, that how scared we are, everyone is, that, that they don't go anywhere. Um, because, uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of an interesting, I'm still discovering what all of this means, uh, what to do with it. But I definitely want to document this time that we're in. And I, I thought, well, what better way to document a, a city of tourism without the people? Um, so. so I have two questions about this. This is very fascinating to me and then to, I'm sure for also the members of the team. Two questions. One is why document it, right? What is the reason of documenting that? But the second, the second also is more the, your artistry. How do you look at a picture mm -hmm. where the subject is present? And how do you look at a picture where the, that subject is absent? I am curious and fascinated by this. That's a very good question. That's a good question. Um, the, the, the first part of it um, is the why. Why do it? Well, to me, it, it's, it's, it's the same as documenting the faces. Um, it, it, it is, it is a thing that, uh, with the, has a social aspect to it. And, and I know that a lot of people aren't going anywhere. So I, th I think, well, I'm a photographer and it's my job to show people the things that they don't see for themselves. So that's kind of simple way of looking at it, that, um, that's what photographers do. They, they, they photograph an event or a news uh, so people can see it because they can't see it for themselves firsthand. So that's a little part of it. But then the other part of it, uh, these are not news photos. Um, they're all black and white. 
and they are <clears throat> I'm shooting them, I'm photographing them <clears throat> with an extreme wide angle lens that I would never use to photograph people because it makes everything distorted. All the shapes elongate and get distorted. And and they're actually they're very grainy looking and infrared kind of infrared look. And <clears throat> so it, it kind of adds that's the artistic part, I guess, that I can't document anything just straightforward snapshot. And so the way to look at it, if I was photograph if I was out photographing and there were people, I, I would focus on the people with the city and the building blurry in the background. But now there's the people is gone, so everything else is sharp. So you see everything else. And the wide angle kind of gives this sense of emptiness even more because it shows so much more. I, I would never use a wide angle to photograph people because they become this big. Right. So, so it's a little bit different, a different way of looking as far as just technical thing. Um, and so that's, that's the, I guess that's the answer. That's fascinating. fascinating. I'm looking forward to see those pictures. Uh, I think that I have seen them on Facebook, but now I'm going to go back. And, yeah. and uh, also you have a Facebook, uh, you have also a page, right? Uh, um, uh, a web page. I do have a web page, but they're not on there yet. They're just on Facebook right now. All right, so I'm going to look at them and also share some of them with the, with the, with the team. And uh, so yeah, so that's very fascinating. So now, you have kind of covered also what is the function of the art in this moment. And, um, and, the, uh, and then one thing that I heard from many artists, mm -hmm. and also I believe, is that the necessity of documenting this is important because, um, and this is also a philosophy of our project, is that then this uh, documentation becomes a memory for us to remember what was happening in this moment so that we don't repeat it, hopefully we, we do remember. And so a great function of the artist. So, so how you think, I mean, there are so many fantastic people in this moment that are essential to, our survival. Yeah. Don't, don't you think the artists are also essential to, uh, to our su survival? And well, I mean, uh, uh, if I can answer as an artist, I would say. Yes, uh, as an artist. Biased, um, but even objectively, I think even if I wasn't an artist, um, You'd have to think about it a little bit, but but then I think in uh, art and culture and uh, and uh, and and the aesthetics and the beauty uh, or the ugliness, whatever the artists pre present to the society, um, I think I think it's just, just as essential as uh, a nourishment. It's a nourishment for the other part of our body. Um, um, I mean, uh, why is toilet paper so essential that people bought, you know, warehouse full of toilet paper? Well, uh, I think art is more essential than toilet paper, uh, at least. Uh, but, but the existence of art um, is important for society. A society that doesn't have art and culture and nourishment for the, for the soul uh, is, is, is not civilized. A civilized society needs art. Um, otherwise, we're machines. Uh, we're just machinery uh, working in a bigger machine, producing things that people can buy and use and throw away. Uh, so that's, I think art is, is very essential. Unfortunately, it doesn't, um, a lot of people who are in charge of funding the art um, maybe don't think that it's essential. Uh, it becomes part of the non-essential immediately. Um, I mean, in this country, we, in, the, in the National Endowment for the Art, the, the one federal institution, which is actually an independent institution, but is funded by the federal government, uh, $153 million, not billion, million. It, 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 for a country of this size and this wealth, it, it's, it's shameful. Um, that that's how much the government thinks about the art. 
And they constantly want to cut it too. It's always under the cut. They want to cut that. They want to cut public TV. Uh, anything that's art and culture related uh, seems like some portion of the politicians uh, just want to do away with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get involved in politics a lot, so. Right, no, no, please, you can talk about politics. Uh, you know, we, we deal also with politics because it's also part of our life, so. Uh, but, but do you think that it's just an, an argument for the artists? You said, you know, I'm, I'm biased, I'm an artist, of course it's important. You touch on something that is very important that also other artists have touched on. In a way, art in this moment is essential because it can keep us sane. Some kind of sanity in here, right? Yeah. And uh, don't you think that we should start to make this, oh, actually, to make the argument, Ramin, but also to start to create the document, a documentation. I am just improvising, you're inspiring me this, uh, so that people will realize that they could have, they have survived this moment that has been difficult for many, also because of the different vari and the various forms of art mm -hmm. that they not only consume through, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Facebook, and all the other, but also they got to do themselves because they had a little bit more, more time. Why is this not happening? Why we artists are not, militant in making this argument. Because at times we, we mm. see, and I'm talking about myself too, although I'm, I'm a little bit less than that, but we are seeing very timid in being militant about our art. How do you think? I, I, ca I catch myself, I'm always in the, in the, in the in should I or should I not, um, and to, to press this uh, very strongly and say art is, you know, it, it, we are timid because you know I, I think what artists by nature uh, are, are maybe uh, not everyone but a lot of artists um, don't have the uh, the verbal language they have the visual language maybe um, uh, except writers and I think and and also we we, we feel a little bit uh, embarrassed. To, to tell people art is important right now, where people are afraid of a virus and they're, they're, they don't have a paycheck and they might uh, uh, not have money to pay their rent. And how do I tell them instead uh, uh, buy art or, or art is important? It, it, it's hard to push that. I know, Rami, it is hard. I, I, and I, you know, I, I am in the same boat. I feel like, well, we cannot maybe ask them to buy art, especially if they don't have money to put food, but can we invite them to do art? Well, then that's good. I mean, a lot of people are doing that. I, I noticed that on, <clears throat> um, I, and on Facebook, a lot of people um, are, are, are doing video uh, things, uh, YouTube uh, uh, or podcasts and things like that, and talking about their art. I think there should be more of that. I think that we could do more of that, definitely. I, I, I don't do enough of it. I, I might post images and things on Facebook, um, but I don't, um, I don't go far enough to, um, to, to do that part, yeah. Uh, but man, I think maybe a lot of people are getting, people, are, people non-artists, non-artist people um, are, are tapping into some creativity that they already had. I mean, look at all the people who are making masks. All of a sudden, everybody is sewing. Uh, they don't even know how to sew. They're sewing these fantastic, wonderful looking masks for the face mask. And uh, it's like, I, I never imagined that there would be so many variety and you go out and see it, all this beautiful stuff they're wearing. I've got a boring, you know, surgical mask and I see all these colorful, beautiful stuff that people are making. And, and then just that one thing, it's, it's like it's opened up creativity in people um, to do something creative with their extra time. Um, <clears throat> there is something, there's... Yeah, yeah, actually this conversation for me, they're, they're fantastic because by talking to artists, uh, they, you guys make me think. 
And for instance, now this sense that, yeah, we are documenting, well, we are documenting because it becomes a memory, but also we should point out to people in this moment that the creativity you were talking about, the art that everybody's embracing, a yeah, different level, because we are all creative, not everybody's an artist, we know that. Because art comes with a different, you know, but, but everybody's being creative and is cre using creativity and uh, art forms to survive this moment. I think that now that I'm thinking about and um, through this conversation, I think that this should be one of the arguments that we should make as artists, mm -hmm. also to the politicians, also to the people that uh, finance our work, to remind them this helped us survive this mm -hmm. difficult time. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. And, and, and also, I mean, people are surviving this time of uh, quarantine and isolation and stay at home and, and can't see their loved ones. Um, and not just make, by making things. Um, there's lots of creative little sparks of creativity in everybody it is there. Um, yeah, not everyone leaves everything and, and say I'm a professional artist and they, they dedicate their life to it. But at this time, a lot of people are finding that little spark of creativity and doing things. Um, um, I see a lot of like uh, 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 illustration uh, people are making uh, related to the COVID. Um, I, I saw and, and uh, Iranian people, uh, uh, they make fun of everything. No matter what disaster, they find the joke. And I saw this one, um, my cousin sent me. It, it shows, it, it, there's a thing that they say, if you drink uh, camel urine, it'll, you know, kill the virus. So here's a camel standing up with a mask and the guy is kneeling down and he's peeing inside his mouth. <laughs> wow, that's a strong image. And so they take everything and make it into an illustration, a cartoon, or a, or a poem, um, and and that's a lot of and, and people who are who are that's not their job, and they don't ordinarily do that. Um, I saw a, a poem. It was long, and it's in Farsi. Just now, someone sent me. It's a poem that someone came up with, wrote it about. The doctors and nurses who are dancing in the hospital to 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 help the patients uh, cheer up and just that act of doctors and nurses dancing that's a creative uh, outfit yeah beautiful so people are doing and then this guy went and wrote a poem about it uh, <clears throat> so lots of little things like that are happening everywhere um, that that are sparks of creativity and it's just that in, when it comes to art people don't think that it's necessity. They think of it as something you do when you have nothing else to do. Uh, only the artists know that, no, this is the thing we do. We, all, we do other things when we have time. Uh, so for the non-artist, it's hard to get them across that because if art is something for them, it's a pastime something to do when they're done everything else um, <clears throat> so I, I don't know how to cross that barrier and as far as the politicians uh, politicians I, I think they're um, very tough very tough sell to convince politicians who don't think art matters um, to convince them otherwise um, yeah we just have to keep. Uh, we just have to survive. We just have to keep alive and keep talking about it, <coughs> and 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 raise voices and 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 you know that that they, they know that we're not dead. Uh, when the COVID started, I mean, we started the the shelter. I mean, not the shelter at home, but the mayor just said, okay, we're going to close places and things like that. Uh, so this was early middle of March. Um, I got a call from. Uh, Jack Morgan does the radio mm -hmm. architect. Um, so he wanted to talk to some artists about what is this going to do for the art community. And, uh, so I didn't know what to say. I said, "Well, we're going to be we're going to be the lowest 
you know, level that people are going to think about right now. Uh, but as time goes on and people get used to the situation we're in, then they start maybe go, okay, so maybe we can see something that that's, that's, has to do with art. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard at times like this. It, 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 no one has any experience from before to how to, how to handle anything. Uh, government is completely, <laughs> yeah. you know, drop the ball, as they say. Yeah, so it's kind of an opportunity for us. I think it is. I think it is. It, it's, 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 um, in a way, it, it's a challenge, but at the same time, it's an opportunity. For one thing, it's an opportunity. All the artists that I know are just going crazy, um, doing work, doing new work, working on projects that they didn't have time to do. Now they have plenty of time to do. Um, so I think once we come out and everyone brings their head out of the cave, there's gonna be a flood of art, of all medium that has been produced during this time. Um, I'm working on a, a, a project um, since January and I'm still working on it. And it's, it's I, I think of it as part of this thing. I mean, that, it's not related to anything COVID. It's not a document of anything. Um, but I, I, to me, it feels like this is what I gave birth to during this pandemic. And that, and that is as important as if uh, it was dealing with the team of the pandemic, because I said, it's happening right now. Exactly. And, that, and that's uh, my response. So we have to consider that pressures because yeah, you're right. As soon as this is over, we will see a lot of work. Oh yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and some work will deal exactly with the team of the COVID, but some work will not. But it was important because it's, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the artist's work, so which is very important to point out. Cool. Yeah. Even the work that's not directly related to COVID, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a side way, it's a little bit direct related because you're doing it. I mean, art requires uh, thinking, right? So when you're thinking is in the state of uh, fear uh, or state of unknown and anxiety, uh, that we artists are going through, what you create will be affected by that state of mind. So even if it, the, the content is not related to the COVID, the, the mentality of what created it is very related. Um, okay. So in, in that way. That's beautiful, yeah. Well, I, on those words, we can even stop here. Thank you very much for uh, for uh, sharing your thoughts um, and I'm gonna look for your work and add it to the um, to the video. I'm gonna share I'm gonna share the video with you. I'm gonna put it on a drive so you have it. Okay. Out. Great. And uh, so thank you very much and then in the future if you want to talk about uh, a collaboration with the performance art with the theater for social change on that project let, we will let's talk. We will we will Thank you, Roberto. This was a lot of fun. This was great. I haven't I haven't talked the, this much uh, for weeks because <laughs> this is another thing. Uh, the, the 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 mouth doesn't work that much because I, you don't I don't see very many people and communication is either a text or an email or something like that or a phone call once in a while. But uh, this is important to 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 keep that uh, human to human uh, uh, interaction. Yeah, uh, even through this, this was my first time doing this. It was a lot. I think I've never used that video, uh, that little camera on this uh, computer before. <laughs> so this was fun. It works very well. I mean, for me, doing this project and talking to so many artists has been, oh, it's, it's been such a, a gift, such a gift. And I'm very motivated and very, very grateful for the time that you guys give me and I am learning so much from, uh, it has been so fantastic. And, and for me, what can I say? Thank you very much.
Thank you, Roberto. I'm honored. Talk. Anytime. We'll talk. I will. Thank you. And take care of yourself and be safe. And You too. You too. You and your family. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.